Hello, a very good afternoon and welcome to the We Are Careers show, um, your fortnightly snippet of careers CPD for all of those working across the career development sector and beyond. Now, in a fortnight where we've seen some incredible advances brought to the public in terms of artificial intelligence, uh, from Google's Bard uh, to Microsoft Bing, Midjourney, GPT-4, it's, it's very, very hard to avoid. We thought, what better time to really dig into how we can kind of use artificial intelligence and other technology within career development work. And importantly, are we talking about this as very much a valuable tool or a potential threat? So this is what we're going to be tackling in today's show. Um, so a very warm welcome. If you've not joined the show before, uh, my name is Chris Webb. I'm a higher education uh, careers professional and member of the CDI. And I'm joined, as always, by my fantastic co-host, Meet Sabir. So Sabir, very happy Wednesday to you. Are you having a, a good middle of the week? I am. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, and welcome everybody that it's who's watching us live right now, or perhaps you're going to catch us on the replay. And today's going to be a great topic because it's all about do androids dream about career information advice and guidance? And where does that sit in to your practice? Now, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure that you do on YouTube or LinkedIn and hit that uh, like and subscribe button. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Make sure that you engage with us today. What questions have you got around this topic because we've got one of the sort of kind of hottest um, and I'm so excited to have back on the show today Dr D and I'm going to be coming to her very shortly but before I do that for those of you that don't know me I'm known as Meet Sabiha and I work internationally helping you know executive and young professionals get unstuck and get back into career flow without the stress and I also happen to be the creator of the I Am Thriving Career Coaching Programme where I work with and I help enhance international coaches' techniques and tools so that they can create even more transformation for their clients. Now, Career Shares, it's a part of the show that where we like to celebrate all things careers and those you, yes, you, the viewers um, that are watching here right now, to celebrate all the amazing work that you are doing right now. So, Chris, who and what are we celebrating today in the hashtag Shares? Thank you very much, Spear. Yeah, we, we've got lots of careers cheers this week. It's a bumper week for sure. So we start off as always just with a reminder, another plug for the careers impact hashtag. So as a reminder, this is all about kind of sharing your stories as career development professionals using that hashtag careers impact, which will flash up on the screen now um, as a way to really make sure that we're kind of showcasing the value of the work that we do as careers professionals. So again, if you've kind of got particular stories that have come up, so one that, that I saw kind of over the last couple of weeks that was really nice, Chris Target was actually talking about um, another professional that had, had done a lot of work. I think it was the kind of the careers librarian, maybe one of the schools he'd worked in, um, and was really giving a shout out to, to their dedication, the work they'd done to support the careers program. Um, if you've got stories like that of clients you've helped or um, stakeholders you've worked with or projects you've worked on, share them with that careers impact hashtag. Uh, let us know, copy in the CDI or copy in myself and Sabir um, and let us know sort of what, what you've kind of achieved and, and let's really sort of celebrate those stories demonstrating the value of career development work. Um, as Bella kind of put it very nicely um, a couple of weeks ago on the show, um, our stories are our capital. So do share that. So that is our first um, careers cheers of the week um, and a reminder as well that you can also use the hashtag so much more than talking about jobs that is still going strong on LinkedIn so do check that out too. Um, second careers cheers for this week actually comes from Pete Robertson our uh, CDI president-elect uh, and he's nominated a former We Are Careers guest Lynn Barham who is uh, apparently retiring soon uh, and this is really just to give a massive thank you to Lynn. Um, Lynn has had a storied career in the career development sector, has written on green guidance, working with adults, as well as representing um, with distinction NYSEC and the CDI for a number of years. So a massive thank you to Lynn for all of her work in the career sector. And uh, yeah, we wish her the very best with the next steps and hopefully we'll have her back on again uh, on the show in the future. Um, and then the final careers cheers for this week uh, is just a bit of a shout out to Caroline Green and Claire Johnson, who this week led a discussion on the future of the careers talent pipeline um, as part of the CDI event. I've included the link there um, on the screen to the, the LinkedIn post that Caroline shared, where she's asking for additional ideas, sharing some reflections from the session. And um, obviously, this is an incredibly crucial piece of work at the moment, particularly when we consider the recent careers in the report uh, into recruitment and retention in the careers workforce. So do check this out if you haven't already. And a massive careers cheers to all of our recipients from this week. Um, back to you, Sabir. 
Oh, thank you. And do you know what? I'm surprised that anyone is letting Lynn retire. I don't think, I, I think there's going to be people going, no, Lynn, you can't retire. I mean, the woman is just amazing. And speaking of amazing, we've just had a Facebook user just go, love the careers. Cheers for Lynn Barham. What a wonderful professional practitioner. So Lynn, if you're watching us right now, a lot of love for you. I'm not sure the sector is going to let you go easily walk away in uh, in, into the distance and so speaking of which okay today we're going to be talking about you know technology and AI and how that fits in with you as a practitioner are you using it are you aware of all of the sort of kind of different developments that Chris mentioned at the top of the show and perhaps maybe you've got questions for our fabulous guest Dr B today if he has use the chatbot feature on whatever platform that you're watching let us know. Join in the conversation. This The show is all, uh, just as much about the guest as it is about you, the viewer, as well. And so without further ado, I'm so excited. Oh, my God, I couldn't even stop talking to Dr. D before I we even got her on the show. But for those of you that don't know her and haven't come across you know, the depth and breadth of the work that Dr. Hughes and her team have done, please, Dr. D, what do people need to know about you? And what have you, you know, sort of kind of what's your journey been like in the career sector so far? Oh, well, thank you very much for inviting me. I will answer that question, but a big shout out to um, to Lynn Barron. I agree with everything that's been said. And also to Bella, who did a fantastic job in actually getting everybody um, around that hashtag. We are, are more than jobs. So uh, very big thank you. And to all our other uh, people that you've had a shout out to. So I'm Deirdre. I'm from Northern Ireland originally. In terms of um, how best to think of me and my work. I've been in the field for a number of years. Think of me as a triangle. In the middle of the triangle, employment, careers, unemployment, skills, technology. Top of the triangle, I do quite a lot of work uh, in terms of policy development. I'm currently working for the Welsh Government looking at future-proofing uh, careers uh, policy. Um, uh, also, uh, I chaired uh, the Matrix Quality Standard on behalf of the growth company in the Department for Education. I'm a researcher, a bit of a geek, um, and that's really how I've got into the technology piece. I'm always curious, how do people find really good information advice and guidance, and how can we create that guidance safety net that's so important? And I'm a practitioner, trained as a careers advisor in the mid 80s. Don't judge me in terms of how old I am, but uh, just to say that, uh, I'm really delighted to be here today, that practitioner voice and looking at how we can harness the latest digital advances is so, so important. Fantastic. Thank you for that. So I hope you viewers are getting a feel and a vibe for what Dr. D does and the, the breadth of the work that she does as well and how I love that sort of analogy that you've used about the triangle. I'm going to bring in a few comments that have just popped up on screen. And then, Chris, I know you've got a whole host of questions for our guests today. So Catherine Jennick was just saying it was a great session. So, Chris, people um, appreciating and showing love for, for what the, the career cheers that you've celebrated with us today. Um, I'm looking forward, one Facebook user is saying that hasn't yet watched the Monday's discussion, but it's on the watch list. I love that um, about Claire Johnson and Caroline Green. And then we've got one other Facebook user saying, Dr. D is an amazing career professional who has further enhanced understanding resources, research and development in the careers world, delighted at this current development of using technology. So talking of technology, Chris, what are, we, what are the subjects, what are the themes that we're going to be getting into today? Yes, thanks a bit. It's, it's a big one, isn't it? Let's be honest, it's a big one. And, and as usual, 20 minutes, 30 minutes may not be enough, but we're going to give it a good old go anyway. So, I mean, we, we kind of have to start with these sort of big questions, right? So, you know, we've seen over the past few weeks some um, particular kind of artificial intelligence technology dropping and getting a lot more prominence. It's, it's not as if this stuff hasn't existed for a long time, but I think as we were talking about pre-show, it's now really starting to kind of gain that traction. It's appearing a lot in the media. People are starting to use it in work starting to experiment it. We're seeing guides coming out for how educators can use artificial intelligence. We're looking at how ChatGPT can be used to help kind of put together CVs, cover letters. So there is all sorts of stuff happening in this space. But I guess the real question that we ought to tackle is, are we kind of looking at this from a career development point of view at the moment as a potentially valuable tool? Or are we looking at it as a potential threat to the work that we do? So that's where we want to start, Deirdre. I know it's a big question, but where do you kind of sit on that valuable tool versus potential threat at the moment? 
Well, really just to say two and a half years ago, I asked myself that very question. And I think that's a great start around um, how do we position ourselves within the career development field where we can be, if you like, ahead of the curve when it comes to digital advances. Um, and I'm going to answer really that question based on having spent two and a half years set up a small startup company um, with colleagues looking at how can we maximize the use of career chatbots and indeed chatbot developments can actually enhance our uh, our profession and our work so i'm going to come on the side of in the middle because it is a valuable it is a valuable tool and i can give you evidence of that and show you you know what good looks like but it is a threat particularly to those most vulnerable in our society and if we had to summarize it you know we have got at the moment in terms of latest ai you've mentioned bing which is the microsoft um if you like rival to open the ai which is a san francisco based tech company uh, who designed chat gbt then we've got bard which is uh, google um uh, if you like google's rival uh, mm. to chat gpt interestingly it's just launched and it's for over 18s mm. only but what we've found out and we've discovered from these very very latest developments that they can provide information and advice uh, around um, this topic of career development and in, in preparation you know for today's session i put into bing help me find a career and it came up with um uh, i think it was eight key things evaluate your skill set think about your interests discover your personality type determine your ideal salary research what the requirements are for particular jobs consider your strengths establish your ideal work environment and leverage your network. And you know, that's just to give you an example and it did give more detail. So as careers practitioners, think about having someone in where you're having a careers conversation. I suspect that you would cover those sorts of things as part of the conversation, depending on how much time you've got. So it is a valuable tool around, if we look at the volume of people that need to be served, and it varies depending if you're in a university or a college or a school or maybe a telephone helpline service, the amount of time that you have with clients. Uh, and so it can be a valuable tool in, if you like, helping clients orientate to career conversations that they would have with a skilled practitioner. It can also be valuable in that sort of um, signposting an individual to a practitioner because you can use a chatbot to actually share information with the permission of the client to the practitioner so if for example you were using cc one of the chatbots we have developed for careers then we can do a warm handover to an advisor and we can send the advisor if you like a pdf of what that person has been doing beforehand. So that's got to be valuable rather than a complete stranger coming in and sitting in front of you. So that's just part of my argument for valuable tool. But it is a threat and it's a threat because if we get overexcited about this digital development, the three, you know, big, you can search for anything. You can write a book, you can write a poem, any problem you've got, you can put it in and it will give you an answer or curiosity you've got but it tells fibs can you believe it so for example i put something in uh, to search for academic references it made them up i wasted loads of time looking to see if i could find that so imagine you're a vulnerable client you know the bots cannot um sense your context they are, if you like, large language models. They're giving you information based on where they actually draw their information in. And just a point that mm. the three that we have mentioned all are quite different mm. in a way in that ChatGPT has got information which is at least two years out of date. Um, others will draw information in from uh, the internet. There's almost like a Google search um, in there if you look at BARD. So um, 
let's not get too carried away uh, with the idea that um, this is a solution, but let's harness the very best of what's there. And I'm happy to talk about ways in which we can do that. Yeah, I, I think that's that will be really interesting to go through. And I, I know we, you know, we might kind of pick up some comments sort of uh, after we've sort of gone through that for, through Sabir. But I, I think it's interesting what you're saying about kind of yeah, the, how do we use it or how do we leverage it? Because this is conversations we've been having in, in the career service where I work around how do we actually get clients to engage with it critically? So I, I was delivering a session last week to postgraduate research students around the purpose of CV writing. And we, we used ChatGPT live within the session. And the purpose of it was really to say, look, you know, this exists. It can do certain things for you that maybe, for example, will do bits of heavy lifting when it comes to kind of writing a lot of text. However, it can't really do the thinking for you. So actually, when it comes to sort of creating prompts that are actually useful within the AI system, you have to do quite a bit of thinking. You know, you have to give it a role or a task. So, I mean, the, you know, the task that I think I gave it last week was, you know, you are a, a professional CV writer. I'm going to give you a copy of a job description. I'm going to tell you about my experience. I want you to use these prompts, you know, to inform the other information I send you. And you have to be quite detailed and quite specific to actually get anything useful out of it. And obviously, as long as you're copying and pasting information that is there, that it can only draw from that, there are certain things that it can do that actually really does save a huge amount of time. But as you rightly say, Deirdre, you know, it's the other stuff where actually, if we're asking it to generate original content, not knowing maybe where that information's come from or, or not knowing the sources that it's drawing from, then there's that that real potential for, for kind of challenge. And I think that sort of ability to engage critically with it from both practitioner and from client perspective is going to be so important and, and certainly worries, as you say, about those who may be vulnerable or less aware of the systems and, and how it works. Um, tell us a little bit more then, as you were saying, about what good looks like. So, I mean, you mentioned about CC briefly there, the, the, the chatbot um, that you've been working on and, and has kind of been rolled out, I know, in a number of different settings. Tell us a bit more about kind of how people have been using that and perhaps how it's been leveraged in a way that, that has been really beneficial for careers professionals. Yeah, I'll give you two or three uh, examples. And again, if any listeners want to find out more, do contact me after the, the show. But let me just start with, for example, Arden University, which is a private university that has a very small careers team. And that careers team not only has to serve the students uh, that are enrolled in the university, but to reach out into the community at pre-enrollment stage. And really what they have done is they've recognized early on that a careers chatbot that can be white labeled, that can actually have a conversation flows and that this is what we're talking about, bots that have conversation flows linked to large language models that can begin to actually provide quick and easy information. So good actually looks like you've got to follow, I believe, a set of ethical um, um, principles. Um, uh, so very that so the Arden University we've published um, a piece in um, Times Higher around six tips, you know, for ethically implementing a chatbot. And Chris, I know that you'll share that that link. But let me just give you the quick headlines. Tip number one: you've got to balance privacy with chatbot development. Those checks and balances about how you're going to use the data. That's number one. Number two: you've got to actually help users find information and advice quick and easy but I believe you have to have the warm handover to the careers advisor and actually if you look in the world very few places have got that here so we're really at the the cutting edge of saying I've always been curious about could we train a bot using artificial intelligence to know the limits of its capabilities now we're a long way off that but I would like to think that if I used a bot and I was going round and round and round in circles, that actually the bot could say, hold on, Deirdre, I see that you, you know, you keep asking the same question. I think it might be useful for you to talk to a human advisor. And that's where I see the future. That's how I see um, success at looking like. I think the third thing really is that You've got to look at integrating the AI functionality with relevant data. So we're a very small company, but we've got what I call our little R&D lab. So at the moment, we are looking at how could you pull out the very best from these GPT tools and actually merge it 
into something like CC that we've already developed. So watch this space. We'll be publishing something on that, bringing people together around that topic. And I guess the important thing is from a CDI perspective, and I'm proud to be a legacy fellow and past president uh, as well um, of what was the Institute for Career Guidance, is can we develop some thresholds where we can basically say these thresholds are, would have to be met before we would use chat GPT either in a bot or actually just generally, you know, with our, our client group. Number four, I think good looks like having some coaching style prompts and, and videos, which we've been really conscious of, of doing that within CC. And to be a big shout out to you around your excellent sort of coaching work. Um, can we actually have little prompts that would motivate and encourage people? Don't hide the humans. Uh, we've got to have that. I've said that already. And make it accessible to as many people as possible. So if you're designing a chatbot, you've got the option if you could say, well, it's $14.99 uh, or however many dollars if we've got uh, colleagues from overseas and pay that and you can have access to it. I really believe that we need to go down a different model, which is to make it as accessible as possible um, to, to individuals. And finally, to build in feedback. That's how we have actually learned from some of the early mistakes that we've made. Build in the feedback and have this culture for improvement. And then finally, what we have within um, Career Chat or CC the Bot is a dashboard. So we can tell you what time, uh, broadly speaking, uh, people are using the bot. Would you believe it? There was somebody yesterday in a school that uh, we have 12 pilots nationally at the moment in a, a school. Someone used it at three o'clock in the morning. Um, so there you go. Who would have thought, you know, that people, uh, they weren't just dreaming of it. They were actually using this. Um, so we can tell what time, we can tell the uh, gender, uh, we can uh, ethnicity. We can build in whatever we want to, to, to know. Um, but we can also see where people are, if you like, searching for particular occupations. Yeah. Now, as a careers profession, we've not really paid much attention to how many people are actually looking at, for example, getting into nursing as a career. Mm. So we, it can be a valuable tool in that we can begin to see geographically in which areas people are searching for certain jobs some of which you know we might find that actually we as career development professionals should have a voice in being able to articulate what people are looking for in, in, in terms of um, particular job areas I could, I could go on and say when i was a practitioner in the 90s i used to when people came into the careers office keep a diary of what everyone had come in and thought they might be interested in I used to take it to the FE college and say, did you know that there's a lot of adults presenting themselves who want to get into social work? So you might want to create an access course that would help you and it would help them. So Chris, I'm going to say it's really valuable because it gives, it empowers us as careers professionals yeah. to move beyond what's going on in school and, you know, to actually say, this is what the man and woman on the street are actually looking for. And now is the time for us as a profession to grab that center stage of us knowing that even though everything's changing, learning, work, opportunities, we have a voice and something to say around what we know from our client group. I, I think it's such an important point, Deirdre, because, again, we've been talking about this today in relation to this technology connected to career development work. But of course, you know, we, we don't exist in isolation. And actually what we're talking about is how is this technology going to impact the entirety of the world of work? And, and that's yeah, a, a larger question, I guess, for careers uh, professionals to grapple with. Um, Sabir, um, do we have any kind of questions, comments in the chat and, and what's coming up next? We, we do. Oh, my God. I personally have got so many questions, but ha perhaps you, the viewer, you've been listening and, and things have kind of pinged off for you as well. So if you do have any final thoughts, perhaps maybe of what you've heard Dr. Here share today, maybe you feel strongly one way or another. Is it a threat? You know, is it a, 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 an, an ally and a valuable tool? If 
so how are you using this as well? You know, because Dr. D did share as well with us how, you know, it can be used and the value of it. And I can personally attest because I was really fortunate that I was actually part of, um, you know, the one of the test pilots that Dr. D and her team were doing where I got to actually implement CC, the chat box CC, in um, a project that I was working on um, last year and the year before, uh, which was the Kickstarter program, which was a government program where young people who had been adversely affected by the COVID pandemic, who had lost their jobs or were or on the borderline of losing their um, work and income and jobs. And so this was a coaching program. And the way that I used it, and it sat really well, because I got... Were, um, was fortunate enough to sort of develop the whole program nationally um, for these young people. And we would use it within our workshops, but also as well, it was an added extra tool. So when they didn't have access to myself and the team, they could go on to CC and put those questions in, always knowing that if they had any further questions, as Dr. D said, you know, you need that human element of sort of kind of transition where the client can then eventually have that interaction with a real human being and a, a, you know, and a registered qualified professionals like myself and Chris and Deirdre as well. In terms of the comments that are coming through as well, we've got somebody here saying, I think that while we feel threatened by the list you've given us from Bing, this does not replace the role of a skills guidance. And yeah. And, and that's kind of like where I sit. And I think that's where I feel. But where do you sit, viewers? Is that how you feel about this subject? Or perhaps maybe you have a different experience and different feeling about this topic. And as always, we always run out of time on this show. So I do want to kind of sort of bring in the final question for today, which is that, Deirdre, obviously, people will have heard you speak on this subject so eloquently. And if there are careers professionals listening and watching today's show who feel that they want to you know, get ahead. Maybe they've heard us talk about, you know, Bing and ChatGP and CC and gone, I've not heard of any of these. You know, where have I been? And but are now sort of interested and want to get ahead of the game. Or perhaps they've heard of what we, the technology and the AI bots that we've been talking about today, but really want to get ahead of the game of this subject. Do you have any recommendations for where they can start their journey if they're just starting out? Or perhaps maybe they can enhance and develop further knowledge and experience in this field? Yeah, I think there's at least uh, three things. Um, the first thing is have a go. Uh, you, you can just put it into Google and you can find BARD, you can find Bing, and you can find ChatGPT. So number one, have a go and see what your thoughts are. Uh, at number two, um, I've been so fortunate to have been invited by the CDI to write some guidance notes for practitioners on the use of AI and chatbots. So the CDI will be publishing that shortly and that'll just give you maybe some insight to, you know, the language around this, the definitions um, and it'll, if you like, um, get you into, if you like, the the conversation and help you think about where you actually stand. I think the third thing really is just to say, save the date on the 27th of April, I'm going to be hosting um, a webinar and, and it will be on this very topic of uh, chatbots and the evidence base. Uh, so again, look out for that. Um, and again, I'll send it to Chris and Sabia. Uh, do do come along uh, to that. And if I can just do a shout out, if you're a schools practitioner, um, there is something which the OECD have been um, working on as part of career readiness. I've been very fortunate to work, work with uh, the OECD team on this. And there's an Odyssey um, observatory where they're actually going to be launching case studies, which will include uh, the use of AI um, uh, in career uh, development. And they've got a conference called Disrupted Futures 2023, and that's on the 31st of May to the 2nd of June. And if you search for that, um, again, you might find that interesting. If you're a schools practitioner, it's mm -hmm. very much around that post-primary, what's going on in terms of uh, career readiness. So they're just a just a, a few things, really, to, uh, to give a mm -hmm. shout out. And I think, you know, can I just say, yeah. like, at the end of the day, a good careers practitioner will always be curious. If you've lost that curiosity, maybe you're a bit worn out, you know, maybe sort of ground down with, you know, low salary, zero contract hours, and that, that's at the extreme end. Can I just say that 
finding something that's sort of innovative um, can spark uh, an energy maybe that you didn't have before and it can help you find your place around being at that um, if you like cutting edge I said to Chris and to Sabia earlier we've talked about digital revolution for years um, mm. but I genuinely feel that in 2023 history will say that this was a tipping point when we first learned about the reality of how information and advice 24 7 can be actually just you can ask mm. any question and there's an answer and for the careers profession let's see what we can embrace in terms of really really good information that will make our job easier make it great for the client but that also we co-design and we co-create chatbots that actually make a difference to people's lives and have that always going to say that human you've got to involve the mm. humans as well yeah, love that. And what a beautiful place to sort of kind of wrap up today's show. Um, and someone's just come in and said, yay for curiosity. As I was discussing the handover of my role, we discussed that the key underpinning skill was curiosity. So that's really resonating. And you've walked away, you heard it here today from Dr. D, some great, amazing sort of kind of practical sort of ways of how you can engage with yourself, but for also as well, the clients and the communities that you are serving as well. So thank you so much, Dr. D, for making time for us today and sharing your insights and your experience. I'm going to head on over now for the latest CDI. Exactly. Thank you, Chris. We're going to cover now latest CDI news, and then I'll hand over to Chris for general news of what's happening in the sector. And that'll be us for the day. And then Chris will introduce what we've got coming up in the next show. So the, for the three top stories that I have picked today, are the following so cdi news you could run a seminar or workshop at the national careers leaders conference and exhibition that is coming up and they are looking to hear from individuals and organizations who'd be interested in leading one of the 40 minute seminars now the theme for this year's conference it's the gatsby benchmark and beyond and it's all about developing evidence and impactful careers program the deadline to submit your proposal is 10 a.m on monday the 17th of april 2023 so head over to the website there's more information about how to sort of kind of create the proposal and and sort of more details about the conference itself as well and that then brings me on to the next news story which is the uk career development awards or a high point in the cdi event career calendar now if by any chance you're watching today's show and you know you're new and you and you keep hearing this word the cdi the cdi you've heard Dita mention, you've heard chris mention it, you've heard me mention it and you're curious to know what that is head on over to the website you can join and become a member and also find ways of how you can become a registered practitioner like um, the three of us as well. Now, the Careers Award Ceremony will be taking place on Monday, the 26th of June in the evening, and it will start at 6 p.m. at the Hilton East Midlands Hotel in Derby. And again, information about how much it costs, depending upon the kind of membership, if you are a member or not a member, um, and also discounts if you're buying more than you know, the ticket for the award ceremony as well as the National Careers Conference. It's all there on the website. And then finally, my third story for today is CDI regional meetings. These are a really great way for you as a practitioner to meet, connect, learn, grow, develop your knowledge and skill set. Um, when it comes to your own professional practice and meet other like-minded professionals in your area. Now, the two that I'm going to highlight are the Wales uh, one that is coming up this afternoon. So if you haven't had enough from Chris and I and Dr. D today and you're thinking, do you know what, I want to do some more uh, CPD work today. Well, guess what? Supporting clients with ADHD in the world of work is taking place this afternoon at 3.30 to 4.30. If you're a member of the CDI, it's free to attend. The webinar is being held by Carolyn Harry, and she'll help you with um, a lot more than this, but the sort of kind of main theme is understanding ADHD, ADHD, insights into living with ADHD, meeting the client where they are, how to engage and encourage the clients to share. And I couldn't have wrapped up the CDI news story without highlighting this. Um, the Southwest Regional meeting will be talking on career development and well-being. The non other than our guest today, Dr. D, okay, um, will be discussing career development and well-being issues currently facing the profession and her involvement in developing the practical toolkit. 
Now, that will be taking place on Wednesday, 19th of April, between 4 p.m. and 5.30, and it's an online event. And for all of these events and news stories, you head, can head on over to the CDI website where you'll find more information. So that's why I have for you viewers today. Chris, what have you cherry-picked? What are your top three stories? Thanks, Sabir. Yeah, I'll rattle through these quickly because I know, as, as always, we're, we're fairly short on time. So um, first one, again, this is hopefully something that people haven't kind of missed over the past week, although there's been an awful lot going on. Uh, but last week, last Tuesday, was the, the final kind of um, hearing, Education Select Committee hearing, into CEIAG in England, uh, which was kind of designed really to sort of wrap up the hearings that they've been doing and, and involved kind of quizzing the previous uh, committee chair, Robert Halfen, about the plans for sort of a future career strategy. Um, there's some interesting stuff in there around the kind of three pillars that uh, Robert Halfen is looking to work towards, but a, a disappointing lack of reference, as we found previously, to the, the work of career development professionals and kind of recruitment and retention issues within the sector. So really worth kind of checking out that hearing. You can watch it back on Parliament TV, see what they're talking about. It does look like there might be a way forward for a future or a new career strategy. So it's worth kind of keeping an eye on this and what's happening in the policy space. Um, our second news story this week is uh, National Careers Week related. So we're not that far removed from this year's National Careers Week. Um, and the, the kind folks at Eric who've been on our, our show before, I've actually kind of released um, a number of the videos, a number of the kind of live sessions that they ran as part of National Careers Week all around the creative industries um, on YouTube, accessible for free to careers professionals. So do check those out. There's some excellent stuff in there about overviews of the creative industries and different skills, um, different recruitment processes, different areas of industry within the creative sector, um, specifically targeted at young people. So do take a look at that too. Um, and then finally, a very kind of topical uh, link to something that Deirdre actually mentioned earlier. It wasn't intentional, I promise. Uh, it was a new survey that we've seen released uh, and kind of referenced in FE News this week, taking I think from about 6,000 students and parents across multiple countries, looking at um, intentions for kind of different jobs or different career pathways. Um, and the, the title of this item is Social Care, Not Social Media, because there was quite a lot of interesting findings from uh, Gen Z particularly about the type of career pathways that are most searched or most requested or most talked about with quite a big focus on things like social care and health care, um, which I guess after the pandemic might not surprise people. But do have a dig into that article. Do take a look at some of the data from it, where they've collected the data from, how representative the samples are. There's some quite interesting stuff in there, whether that's indicative of wider trends or, or is really just something to bear in mind that, that might be worthy of further research um, is perhaps kind of up to you to decide. But do take a look. Very, very interesting piece in FE News. Um, and that brings us really nicely to the end of today's programme. Uh, so I'll just kind of do a very quick intro to the final show of Series 8. So this is just a reminder that uh, we only have one episode left of this series, which is uh, which is quite sad, but that's all we've got left. So this is going to take place on Wednesday, the 5th of April, uh, usual time of 12 o'clock, our last episode of Series 8. And we're going to be welcoming back Ipsa Shakur from the CDI to talk about how her work exploring uh, equity, diversity and inclusion in the CDI has been progressing since she joined us on the last series. So that is our final um, episode of season eight. Join us on Wednesday, the 5th of April. And until then, have a great fortnight. And uh, thank you very much to those who joined. And of course, a massive thank you to our guest, Dr. Deirdre Hughes, for being here with us today. All the best. Take care. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks time. Thank you for having me. <laughs>